On day one, I spawned in as a baby dinosaur. Check me out. I'm a triceratops. Jeez, I only had five hearts though. So I gotta be careful. I looked around. I seemed like I was in a forest biome. I wonder where the other triceratops are. Where's my parents? Before I could find them, a pack of velociraptors attacked me. Hey, back off. I tried to fight them off, but I had no weapons and I was down to one heart. That was enough to send me running. Luckily, I was small and able to get ahead of them, losing them in the jungle. That was close. I was low on health and hungry, but couldn't risk exploring without any tools or weapons. I screwed around and tried down a tree using the wood to make myself some quick items luckily while i was chopping down a tree i found an apple that saved me by now it was getting dark so i mined some stone quickly and fortified what looked like a cave entrance i was about to turn in when i noticed a series of strange figures on the cave wall what does that say subscribe to fozo oh hey make sure you do words to live by tomorrow i do some proper exploring on day two i woke up and crafted the remaining stone into stone tools suddenly i heard the ground shaking is it an earthquake i better get out of here i jumped out of the cave when i saw it it was the biggest spot Dinosaurus I've ever seen. It could swallow me whole in one bite. Don't panic, Fozo. Don't panic. I ran back inside the cave and the Spinosaurus lunged after me, but it was too big to fit in. I waited until nightfall, mining the back of the cave for whatever I could find. Only two pieces of iron? Ugh, I guess that was enough. With iron being annoyingly hard to find, I decided to upgrade my sword. If anything, this will be the thing I need the most around here. As night fell, I think my enemy left. I explored out and I think I found the perfect place to call my new home. I quickly put it together, a small shelter for the night. I burned some wood also make some torches. I finally felt safe enough to rest. On days three to four, I must have slept poorly because I had the worst nightmare. Everything was destroyed. There was fire everywhere. I looked up and saw a massive meteor looming over the planet. What does this mean? Is this the end of the world? I have to stop it. I woke up scared in the middle of the night. I walked outside. Wait, what is that up there in the sky? It looks like a star of some sort. I wonder if this has anything to do with my dream. The next morning, I was tired of being hungry, so I needed to start my own farm. I went out to find plants and seeds. Sweet. Oh, man, uh, I'm sorry. Here, uh, I bet I can find you some more. Give me a sec. I use my speed and size to forge around. Aha, here's some more. I hope this makes up for it. Luckily, the bird liked the flowers I found. Hey, we should be friends, you know. The bird liked that idea. She needed a name. How about Trixie? Sweet, my first friend. I needed to build a section of my base for my new friend. I got to work on making a small house. It's a start at least. Afterward, we started working on a farm so neither of us would go hungry. I stood back and took in our first little attempt at a home. What do you think, Trixie? Big enough for you? And I appreciate you too. Why do you guys go extinct anyway? Uh, never mind. On days five to six, we woke up to the house coming down around us. What the heck? It was a stampede of Brachiosaurus. Guys, stop. You're wrecking our house. But they couldn't hear me. It seemed like they were scared. I had to leave. After the stampede had passed, I went back to look at the house. Thankfully, Trixie was okay. It was totally trashed though. Well, at least it was only a little house. My upcoming base is going to be much bigger. I spent the day gathering some stone to build my base with. I hope it makes it last longer. I decided then and there that my base needed to be big enough and strong enough to protect any and all dinosaurs at all costs. A place where herbivores and carnivores can live in peace. I got to work. On days seven to eight, I needed to expand my food offerings. I headed out on the hunt for food. I hadn't gone far when I heard a fight. That's one mad chicken. that was being attacked by a velociraptor. Just the one? Oh, I can take him on. I fought him with my iron sword. He hit me once or twice, but I was just that much stronger. Whew, that was close. Already stronger than day one. Speaking of stronger, something happened. I changed and I'm bigger now. Wow, I had 10 hearts. The chicken was an awe and agree to come back with me. I'll give you a good life, buddy. Don't worry. We made it back to the base and found it was overrun by a bunch of smaller dinosaurs. Get out of here, you pests. We fought them off and repaired the damage they'd done. I also needed a place to put my new chicken friends. Here you guys go. A little pen just for you. You'll be safe with us, all right? And we'll protect you from those meat eaters. Don't worry. Don't worry, Trixie. I'll find some somewhere. Trixie told me that there might be some iron around the base of the volcano. Wait, volcano? I hope it doesn't go off. We settled in for the night. Tomorrow, it was time to go hunting. On days 9 to 10, I was looking for more iron when it led me to the base of a volcano. Whoa, the heat was intense. The trail led me to what looked like an ancient battle arena. I've got a really bad feeling about this. I snuck as quietly as I could inside. I'd barely made it in when I saw him. It was the Spinosaurus. He was rallying all of the predators. Fellow predators, I have called you here today with a mission of great importance. I want each and every one of you to head to your biomes and destroy any herbivore you find. Eat them all and grow fat from strength. I don't like the sound of that. For too long have we let the plant eaters roam our lands without care. They eat up our biomes and act like it's theirs. Well, no longer. We will show them fear again. I couldn't just stand by and listen. I jumped down and confronted him. You're out of line, man. You again. I remember your scent. 
friend. I never forget a meal. Time to be eaten. What you're saying is wrong. We can live together. In fact, we have to. I had a vision of a great disaster coming. If we don't work together, all of us are done for. Do you hear this weakling? He's trying to scare us with what? A vision? Gum predators. Let's give him something to really be afraid of. Oh no. Guess I'm gonna have to fight them all. Suddenly the ground shook. Volcano. It's leaking lava. I used the distraction to escape. Booking it as fast as I could down the mountain. Hope my base is as strong as I think it is. On days 11 to 13, I made it back to my base. Careful not to be followed. I'd barely made it back when all of a sudden there was a flash of blinding light and a villager fell from the sky. What time period is this? Yo, villager, what are you doing here? Talking dinosaurs. Brilliant. I always wanted to meet you creatures. My name's Nigel and I'm from the future. I've come to warn you about the meteorite. The meteorite. So my dream was real. I looked up at the sky and saw it. If it was that big, that far away, then it must be huge. That thing could wipe out the whole planet. Hey, can you help us out? The villager was all on board to save as many dinos as we could. Glad to have you on our team. I took him to my base and showed him around. You know, little dino, I have a few ideas that might increase your chance of survival. Nigel showed me a few schematics he had. One was of a huge telescope to monitor the meteor's progress. All he needed was some sand for the glass and iron to house it in. Sand I can do, but iron might be a little tricky. For some reason, it's rare in this time period. Never fear. A nerd is here. Luckily, he had brought back some tools from the future. An ore detector. There's a whole iron vein right beneath us. Thanks, dude. With the tracker, I got to work. Mining the ore was a breeze when I knew where it was. With a healthy supply of iron, we were able to build ourselves new tools and armor. I was feeling much better now, but I still had work to do. With some of the stone I had gathered along the way, I built an outer wall for the base. Looking good. Afterwards, I made my way to a nearby river and dug up the sand I needed. With everything in place, I returned to Nigel and we got to work building the telescope. When we were done, Nigel promised to keep us updated. I also have a few more things in the works. I'll let you know. Thanks, man. Good to have you on our side. We'll try to keep you safe from the Spinosaurus, okay? On days 14 to 16, I was hoping to use the ore tracker to find some diamond when I heard a commotion outside the base. It was the Velociraptors again. They were trying to get through my new wall and failing. I attacked them. This is what the Spinosaurus was talking about. Those herbivores are endangered. I couldn't just sit by. I made sure I had some iron armor and weapons along with plenty of apples to sustain me. Goodbye, guys. I'll be back with friends in no time. On days 17 and 19, I made my way out of the forest and into a new biome, the wetlands. I ran forward until I heard velociraptors. They had a little camp in that cave. I snuck towards them. What are they doing? They've captured something. It's a baby dinosaur. I need to save it, but there's too many. I needed to be clever, so I waited till nightfall and for the raptors to doze off. I carefully snuck around the sleeping raptors. The baby looked in bad shape. Here you go. Some food to help you up. Eat quickly. We have to get out of here. We started to leave, but the raptors woke up. We ran. I can't wait till I'm stronger. Hey, little guy, how are you holding up? Leave it to me. I can help. Lead the way. On days 20 to 23, the baby led me to his herd. Whoa, that one's huge. He thanked me for saving his young dino. You are always welcome here for saving my son. The predators have recently made our lives a misery, so any good is greatly appreciated. Thanks. My name's Fozo. I'm building a sanctuary where all dinosaurs can live in peace. There's a great catastrophe coming in, and we need to work together to get through it. We will work together, but some of our elders are dying from hunger. We've been cut off from our berry bushes and have no other source of food. Hey, I can grab some berries and bring them back, no problem. The elder thanked me and wished me luck. I'll be back before you know it. As I traveled across the wetlands, I couldn't help but look up at the sky. It's getting closer each day. Man, I wonder how long I have to save everyone. I better hurry. On days 24 to 26, we found the sweet berries. Look at all that food. I started harvesting as much as I could carry. These will be great for my sanctuary. I'd almost filled up our inventories when there was a rustling in the grass. Uh-oh. I was charged by a huge dinosaur. That headbutt looks dangerous. I couldn't attack it head on, so I lured it next to a wall and bam. He headbutted the wall. Quick. While he's stunned. Attack. He packed a punch, but he was no match for my armor and sword. Take that. The dinosaur was defeated. That must have been a huge battle because I noticed I'd grown again. 15 hearts. I gathered up the berries and made my way back to the herd. On days 27 to 29, I arrived. I gave the berries to the hungry herd members. I could see them gaining their strength back. Wait, what's that noise? Oh no. Not here. It was a Spinosaurus. Hey, you. I'm over here. Why don't you pick on me instead of those innocent herbivores? <laughs> You're not even worth my time, insect. He began attacking the herd. The elder jumped in to defend his herd. He told me to get his people back to safety. I got the herd moving and we escaped into the forest. I turned back to see if I could help, but the Spinosaurus killed the elder.
I'm sorry. Listen, my sanctuary is close, and I promise nothing will terrorize you guys there. They seem to believe me. But as we made our way into the forest, I felt the weight of my promise. What have I gotten myself into? On days 30 to 32, we returned to the base. I worked on getting the dinosaurs settled in by building them a small pool and planting all the sweet berries they could ask for. I started work on a large dinosaur statue, both to honor the fallen and to inspire hope to anyone who sees it. I just got in the base of my statue finished when there was a scream. It was the baby dinosaur I helped earlier. It looked very injured. It looks like she ate something poisonous. I have a brewing station, but I don't have the ingredients. Well, what do we need? Maybe I can go find it. Sounds perfect. Can you show me where it is? Unfortunately, Trixie couldn't remember its exact location. I might be able to help Trixie describe the fruit for me. What are you doing, Nigel? Apparently, the fruit has a very distinctive smell. Very pungent. One second. Aha, here it is. A smelloscope. A what? You just stick it up your nose, and it will enhance your sense of smell. You'll be able to find those berries no problem. Okay, well, here I go. Don't worry, little guy. I'll be back with that fruit before you know it. On days 33 to 35, I crossed out of the forest biome and started heading up and up this crazy tall mountain. My nose led me to a massive river. Jeez, how am I supposed to cross this? But wait, I can smell something across the way. The ancient grove must be nearby. I looked into the water and saw it was swarming with crocodiles. Those look nasty. I don't think I can make it if I decided to swim. So I got to work building a small bridge. As I tried to push forward, the crocodile attacked, knocking me off the bridge. I fell. I tried to swim, but the current was too strong and I was swept downstream. The river took me down and down until that noise waterfall i fell but somehow i survived that was a close one for sure i tried to tower up with rocks and came across a small cave in the wall maybe it leads back to the top i barely stepped back inside when there was a rumbling and entrance collapsed better watch where i swing my tail i guess on days 36 to 38 i was still in the cave the tunnel went up and up winding its way back and forth luckily i had my ore detector and found a bunch of diamonds along the way score i crafted a diamond pickaxe and sword giving me the edge i needed this must have been an ancient river i wonder where all the water went I'd been traveling for what felt like days when, all of a sudden, I came across an underground lake. There were a whole bunch of giant fish. <coughs> to be honest, I wasn't looking. I'm on my way to the growth. <coughs> if you show me how to get there, I'll see if I can get the water flowing again. The fish agreed to help and led me to a small tunnel at the back of the cave. Thanks, guys. I'll get that water flowing. I promise. On days 39 to 41, I made it back to the top of the waterfall. And look, there's the entrance of the ancient grove. I wish I could stay longer, but I was on the clock. Okay, where's that? Ah, there it is. I saw the fruit hanging from a nearby tree. If only I was taller. I looked around to see if I can climb on something. When I saw the lake that the fish was talking about, what's that? Is that a dam? I got to work smashing it up until a pteranodon swooped down and attacked me. I had to fight back. Take that. After a few hits, the pteranodon was defeated. I took care of the dam and watched the water flow. With the river restored, all the fish were able to swim back into the grove. Hey, no problem, guys. I then went back to go grab some of the sacred fruit. Thanks, guys. I'm building a sanctuary nearby. You can totally come live there. They all agreed. Time to go save my friend. On days 42 to 44, I returned to the base. I gave Nigel the fruit I found, and he got to work. While we waited, Nigel told me that him and Trixie had been working on an idea. Let's hear it, Nigel. Well, we were thinking about our meteor situation, and we were wondering if we couldn't try, well, I don't know, shooting it with lasers? It might work. Lasers? Now we're getting spicy. What do you need? Nigel gave me the schematic. Man, we'll need way more diamond for this, but I'll keep an eye out. Thank you, Flozo. It's a long shot, but it just might work. Oh, seems our potion is ready. Perfect. Give it to me. I'll take it to him. I fed the antidote to the baby and hope for the best. It'll be better soon, I promise. I got to work getting the base ready for the fish. I expanded the lake and used the diamond I dug up in the cave to make a single set of armor and a new sword. I decided to keep working on my statue. Suddenly, I heard a roar. I ran to the wall to see a dinosaur running away. <laughs> If he makes it back to the Spinosaurus, then we'll really be in trouble. I chased after it and defeated it before it could reveal our base location. That was a close one. I really needed to upgrade my armor if I'm going to eventually take on their head leader. On days 45 to 47, I set out with the villager's ore detector to find diamond. Let's see. It's picking something up. Diamonds. I mined as many as I could, filling my inventory. Now the base and my gear will be much more reliable. I was on my way back to the base when I heard something close. Oh, it was a Stegosaurus. It was injured. <laughs> 
The stegosaurus was in bad shape. I led him back to my base. A few berries later and he was feeling much better. He told me where to find his tribe. Far out in the desert. They were being hunted by a terrifying predator. I gathered some food and reinforced the rest of my gear with the diamond I'd found. Here you go, Nigel. The diamond you need. I'll help you build it up when I get back. I told the villager and Trixie to keep mining and set off. On days 48 to 50, I followed the stegosaurus's instructions out of the forest, across the wetlands, and out into the sand-blasted dunes. Glancing upwards, the meteorite just seemed to get bigger and bigger with every passing day. Just focus on helping as many dinosaurs as you can. Pteranodon, get down here. It flew away. Still, I didn't like that whoever was attacking the stegosaurus would know I was coming. I had to keep moving forward, though. On days 51 to 54, I found the stegosaurus's herd. I was about to run up to them when something big came out of the sand dune. It was an allosaurus and a giant one. The allosaurus attacked the stegosaurus. No, leave them alone. I ran in and fought back as best as I could, but the allosaurus was too strong. I need to lead him away. Come on, follow me. I led the allosaurus into the desert, but it was fast, and it got a few hits in. Man, that hurts. I'm going to need to upgrade my armor if I'm going to have to face this beast. Still, as a triceratops, I could run for days. Keep up. I ran off towards the desert. On days 55 to 57, I managed to shake the allosaur. I tried to loop back where I left the stegosaur, keeping an eye over my shoulder the entire time. Where are they? Better question, where am I? I was beginning to lose heart. I pushed on, and my hunger was getting really low. Just one more dune. They have to be around here somewhere. Wait, what's that? It looks like an oasis. It wasn't a mirage. That water was refreshing. Ow, what the heck? It was more of those alligators. Suddenly, there was a sound of heavy feet on sand, and an ankylosaurus came and then attack the alligators. Wow, thanks, man. Uh, I hate those things. Always biting my ankles. Plus, they stole my eggs. Um, who are you, young dinosaur? I'm Fozo. I'm trying to save the Stegosaurus's herd that's nearby, but I got attacked by a huge Allosaurus, and now I'm lost. The Stegosaurus are good friends of mine. I'd love to help, but those fish stole my eggs, and they took them into that underwater cave down there. Well, I can't swim. Maybe I can help. I know how to swim. The Ankylosaurus thanked me and told me to rest up at the Oasis. I knew I needed to get my strength for tomorrow. On days 58 to 60, I swam down into the oasis. The cave was narrow, but I was able to fit, gathering any and all the food I could find. Fish, seaweed, it's all good for someone. Eventually, I found them. The eggs. I snatched them up. They'll be safe with me. No sooner had I grabbed them when a dinosaur appeared out of the gloom. Sorry, dude, but I'm not fighting that. No way. Luckily, I made my way back to the surface. My eggs. Thank you, kind sir. Please keep them safe for a while longer as we look for those stegosaurus. I got upgraded to 25 hearts. Now let's find those stegosauruses. He led me out into the desert. Hang on, guys. We're coming. On days 61 to 63, the Ankylosaurus led me back to where I'd left the Stegosauruses. There was none of them in sight. We searched for them, but then spotted the Allosaurus in the distance. As long as that beast roams the lands, there's no peace for anyone. You got that right. Let's follow him and see what he's up to. We spent the day following the Allosaurus, careful not to be spotted. He eventually led us to a cave beneath the sand. We could hear what sounded like an animal in distress coming from inside. I wanted to help. My Ankylosaurus friend told me to wait until the coast is clear. It would be safer for us. And the captive if we can get in unseen. On days 64 to 66, we snuck into the Allosaurus's cave. In it, we found a bird mother and the Stegosaurus's. Your daughter? Trixie? I know where she is. We'll get you out of here and you can take care of her. Just before we were about to free her, the Allosaurus appeared. No more running. This ends now. We both attacked. The battle was fierce, but brief. The Allosaurus fell and was defeated. With him dealt with, we freed the mama bird and the remaining Stegosaurus herd. On days 67 to 69, we were making good progress until disaster struck. One of the Stegosauruses fell into a tar pit. I tried to reach her, but I couldn't without getting stuck myself. What should I do? We were in the desert. I couldn't find anything to pull her out with. I'll see if I can find help. Hello? Anyone? Please, I need help. Suddenly, a herd of Brachiosaurus has appeared. Man, I'm glad I've ran into some fellow herbivores. I need help. My friend is stuck in a tar pit. The leader agreed to help. Okay, thank you. Follow me. The Brachiosaurus used its strength to pull the Stegosaurus free. Close one. Thank you guys so much. You should all come to my sanctuary. I'm trying to keep all the dinosaurs safe from the meteor that's coming. <laughs> The Brachio explained that the Pteranodons had been pestering herds for days. I pointed all my new friends towards my base and decided to tackle these pests once and for all. On days 70 to 72, I found the Pteranodon's nest. Man, that's really high up. Still, I was much stronger now and made the climb with ease. <laughs> 
finally got up to them, and they attacked me immediately. But they were no match for my new strength. I defeated them. I was about to leave when I saw chests that could be looted. I looted the nest, gathering up some health potions, some food, and three gems. I'll ask my villager friend about that when I get back home. With my spoils in my hand, I climbed back down and found the Spinosaurus waiting for me on the bottom. I wondered who was sticking their horns in my business. Wherever a herbivore is, I'll be there. You stand with the weak. You'll die with them too. It attacked, but I was stronger now too. We were evenly matched. Whenever I lost heart, so did he. We were both low health. I can't risk it. Luckily, it seemed he thought the same thing. He was retreating. I watched him go before turning and heading back to the base to heal up. Trixie was reunited with her mother. I helped the Stegosaurus and the Bronchiosaurus settle in. I expanded my base to accommodate such massive creatures. Here you guys go. Hut's big enough for the both of you. Help yourself to as much greenery as you need. With my base expanded, I turned in for the night. Ah, oh, what a week. On day 73 to 75, I got to work finishing my base and working on the dino statue. I built up the walls, putting the final touches on the paddocks for my friends big and small. I stood back and took it all in. All that work, all my new friends, I hoped it would be enough. But looming above us was that meteorite, bigger than ever. Oh, Fozo, the laser is finished. Would you like to give it a test fire? A test fire. Do I? I followed him to the laser. I prayed this could work. Calibrate the Y angle. Account for Z. Okay, let it rip. Here goes nothing. Wait, nothing happened. Ugh, as I feared, Fozo. If only lasers could solve all of life's problems. Well, that might not have worked. But what about these? Can these help? I showed the gems to my villager friend. Surely he would know something about this. Oh, this is perfect. This is exactly what I need for my time machine. Some of it, at least. If we build one, we can escape to your future. Brilliant. We went over the plan and drew up a list of materials I would need. I would need ancient gold? Obsidian? and one ender pearl? Well, where am I gonna get ancient gold? I guess I gotta start looking. I set the tracker, and it got a signal. It's a long way away, though. I stocked up and hit the road. This plan is crazy, but it might just work. On days 76 to 78, I found the signal into the ice biome. Not a place for a dinosaur. It was freezing, and I was worried about keeping my hunger and health up. Glad I brought some berries with me. These really do come in handy. I made my long journey across the ice biome, stopping to rest in whatever caves and valleys, until I came into a massive frozen ocean, and in the distance, there was a temple. That's where the tracker says I'll find gold. But first, I need to be careful crossing this ice. If I fell in, I knew I'd be done for. I was only a couple steps from the temple when something moved beneath me. Uh, what was that? Just then, the biggest dinosaur I'd ever seen smashed through the ice. Luckily, a few of the blocks looked sturdy enough for my weight. And with some platforming, I was able to make it to the temple steps. Phew! I made it. The temple awaits. On days 79 to 81, I made it inside the temple. It was ancient, all right. I thought only dinosaurs existed in this time period. Who could have built this? Just then, the tracker started to ping. The walls! They're made of the ancient golden obsidian that I was talking about. Suddenly, I heard movement. I'm sorry, guys. I thought this place was... Huh? It was a Parasaurolophus. Halt, trespasser. Why are you destroying my castle? I'm sorry. I didn't know this place was still inhabited. If you don't mind me asking, did you guys build this? Of course we did. We built this place to shelter us from the meteorite, and you're wrecking it. Well, I need some of this gold to help my other dinosaurs. Do you mind if I take a few? Take apart our mighty base? I think not, Hornhead. Our walls shall never crumble. He was furious. I didn't want to get attacked so far from home, so I thought of a deal. Hey, that huge dinosaur outside, he's probably giving you some trouble, right? What if I took care of him and you let me keep some of this golden obsidian? He agreed. I gathered my ore and headed back out to face the huge dinosaur. For days 82 to 86, I decided to get creative. No way was I just going to jump in there with that monster. Time to employ some modern day thinking. I used some of the materials from the temple to build myself an iron cage. Okay, I'm ready for you. Let's see if this works. The monster attacked. He hurt the cage, but not me. He was tough, but I was persistent, and eventually, it was defeated. I did it! Whoa, what's going on? 30 hearts! I'm definitely the strongest I've ever been. I got back to the shore, and the Parasaurolophus was waiting for me. Go with our blessing, Fozo. We hope your base is as strong as ours. Thank you. I hope so, too. I returned to my base on days 87 and 91, tired, but excited to build the villager's time machine. I made it inside my base and gave the golden obsidian to him. All we needed now was an ender pearl. Where are we gonna find one of those? Suddenly, an enderman teleported in. Hey, that was convenient. I made the mistake of looking the enderman in the eyes and he attacked me. I killed the enderman and he dropped the pearl. Exactly what I need. I helped Nigel build a time machine, but he told me I needed a few days to charge. A few days? Oh, that's cutting it close. You can't mess with time travel. One false move and we're all lost in the ice age. I couldn't just sit around doing nothing. So I finished my dinosaur statue. There, a beacon for all animals everywhere. On days 92 to 95, I woke up to the ground shaking. Wait, this isn't just a footstep. It's an earthquake. Trixie ran in, telling me that the volcano that was nearby was 
was about to erupt. It's a Spinosaurus. I know it. He can't smash his way in. So now he's going to flood the base with lava. I ran outside and saw all my friends panicking. Hey guys, calm down. No way am I going to let that guy take us out that easily. I'll head up that volcano and stop him. Everyone seemed to trust me. Great. Now I hope I can pull it off. Before I left, I met with each of the dinos I'd saved. They thanked me and promised to lend me some of their power when the time comes. Thanks guys. I hope I won't have to use it, but I'm proud to call you my friends. I looked up. The meteorite was right on top of us. Uh, I hope my base would hold and if that failed, I hope the machine would be charged enough. On days 96 to 98, I ran as fast as I could towards the volcano. Every bio I crossed, I saw mobs panicking. Hey guys, calm down. I have a base. It's back that way. We're all in this together. I made it to the base of the volcano. There was lava already pouring down its sides. The Spinosaurus was waiting. I thought back to the beginning of my journey and how big and scary he seemed then. Well, I'm bigger and scarier too. Let's see how he can handle it. On day 99, I made my way back to the arena and prepared myself for a fight. It's time to settle this. Well, well, look who it is. Here at the end of the world, my final prey. I told you you would never escape. Don't you see? Us fighting is pointless. That meteorite is coming and it's gonna wipe all of us out. It's not too late to come back with me. Live with you? An herbivore? Ha! I'd rather die. Your choice then. This is long overdue. I lunged at him, but he was huge. My attacks did damage and so did his. I don't know if this is gonna work. I have to fight smarter, not harder. Wait, he's top heavy, right? Maybe if I get one good hit on his ankle. There we go. No! He slipped and he fell off the platform. The lava will take care of you. With him gone, I needed to get back to my base. On day 100, the meteorite hit. The sound was deafening. I looked up and I could see it. It was right on top of us. The time machine, it's ready. Come on, let's go. You heard him. Everyone get to the time machine now. I stayed until the very end, making sure every dino made it through. I looked around what I'd built. If it hadn't been for me, we wouldn't have even made it this far. I jumped into the time machine. Trixie, we're alive. We did it. Hey, where are we though? Is that a fence? Well, I might not have been entirely honest with you. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Oh man, this might be worse than the meteor. 